YouTube. What we're doing today is very informal. Um, it's just some training for a couple of people that are going to be working with me and one of my Thai admin staff on Johnny Phonics and Phonics in general. I just thought it would be a good idea to film it and I hope you guys are okay. We're not going to put you on camera. It's just that. Uh, I don't know. I've never done this live before, so let's hope it works. If not, we'll just delete the video. Cool. <laughs> That's the best way for Right. Um, just for those of you that you both, you all know who I am and what I am. The, the school I work at, by the way, is called EAC, English Academic Consultants. We have three ways you can follow me. One of them isn't working there. There we go. So we have a Facebook page, EAC School, which you can search for. I have my YouTube page, which I presume the people watching know about. Uh, this is an old screenshot. We're nearly at 40,000 subscribers now. And you can find me privately on Facebook, Jay Richardson. I, I, I tend to duplicate most of my videos these three platforms, but you cannot add me as a friend on Jay Richardson because I'm full. They only have 5,000 friends, and apparently I've got 5,000 very close Instagram friends <laughs> that we talk to regularly. We get a lot of Christmas cards. Ah, and you can still follow me. That's right, you can still follow. Um, this, is the, this is my school motto. This is my school motto. This is something that's on all my shirts, got posters of it downstairs. Today's going to be a bigger picture kind of conversation. It's from Albert Einstein. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. That's really, really important to me. Uh, you, we talk about this all the time, right? We're not here to teach kids a certain verb or a certain noun or a certain word. That, that we're just using that word as a tool to teach learning skills, problem solving, decoding, individual, independent education, as opposed to just saying memorize a CAT cat is that picture. We're getting the kids to we'll figure out on their own. Uh, just for the Thai people, they can't speak that. Maybe they can learn what they are doing or not doing. But it's just a way to teach them how to think. None of my followers are from Thailand, but uh, an example of that, by the way, um, I think there's another clip. I don't know if I've deleted it already, but the other clip, which might come up, is from Lao Tzu, and he said, um, "Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him how to catch fish." feed it for a lifetime. That's still um This idea that phonics is really important for this. It's a way of empowering a child or a learner to figure out their own answers. Phonics is like one of the most important educational aspects in my mind. Alright? For here's an example of that. I don't know if you know this before. Can you figure that out? You got it? Yeah? Did you get the end? No. And did you get it? Yeah. I know what you're doing. You're looking at the numbers. You're looking at the colours. Yeah. You're trying to figure out which colour's wrong. You may tell me there's a zero missing. Uh, you're going to tell me the colours don't match. Uh, if you were halfway there, I've had a student once say to me, yeah, can you find a mistake? Yeah, there's the word mistake, I found it. <laughs> That's not the answer either. The answer is much, much more blatant than that. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. It means you were blind to it. Did you get that one? I got it straight away, but yeah. I think you told me the other one. We might have done this previously, yeah. All right? The idea being that you're blind to the bigger picture. This, in my mind, is what phonics is about. It's about, it's not really about this particularly, but it's the idea. All right? That you can train your mind to think in a different way. And unfortunately, the, the, the country we work in is very much down a different path. I'm not going to stand on YouTube and criticize the education system of the country I live in. However, they are not set up to figure out this kind of problem. What they're figuring out is what comes next, 10, 11, 12. They're not looking at the, the issues, all right? I have to be very careful what I say if I'm live on YouTube. <laughs> Um, yeah, there it is. Give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And for the Thai people, That's it. In English, that's it. Or in Chinese. Um, so what we're going to talk about today it's going to be not just the phonics program. No, what I'm not here to do is just give you this is how we do it. I want to give you a bigger background. 
we've got like an hour and a half in our hand to muck around with, we're not in a major hurry. So what we're going to talk about today is what is phonics? I don't know if you ever sat down and had a serious chat with yourself about this, but what is phonics? What is phonics not? And do you have a choice while teaching it? The answer is yes, you do. And I'm going to give you both of those choices outlined. We as an institution, as a school, fall on one theory. I don't, we, we can mix them up a little bit, but we need to take a stance on which we're going with this. But the way, the way reading and writing has traditionally been taught in our own countries too is C A T CAT. D O G dog. Memorize that. Spell that back to me. C A T CAT. Well done. D O G dog. And in Thailand, they add the translation. C A T CAT. Bella man. D O G dog. Bella man. In Thailand, that's the same time. I even had a Matium student study with me, a secondary school student study with me, who couldn't spell any other way. You'd show him a picture of a dog and say, D-O-G, dog. Like a 14-year-old young man. He couldn't just say, dog. Oh, B-A-T, bad. I like, he'd even say, D-O-G, dog, man. And he'd say for every word, it'd been drilled into him. Which is what we call rote learning. R-O-T-E. Rote learning. It just needs to mem- so you, you probably memorize your timetables that way. Two times two is four. Three times two is six. Four times two is eight. But then when somebody gets you to draw your times table graph, there's a map you can do of times table. And you get a shape. And then you can visualize your times table and you never have to memorize it. Having said that, I don't know my times tables. I haven't done that. I just know <laughs> that you can do that. <laughs> I'm not a maths guy. <laughs> Yeah? But there are different ways of knowing maths, right? And if you ever meet someone who's very good at it, people have visual maths. They visualise stuff. Whereas, and it's the same thing for what we're talking about, the different ways of learning information. Um, phonics will teach your child, or the child, or your student, or a child, how to think. It's not just about finishing the book. It's about the, the strategy you use to think and decode issues. That's what the child is approaching. Because you're going to give them a little bit of info and then ask them to fill in the gaps to get a bigger knowledge. You can't teach a child English one word at a time. You'll be there forever. You'll tell me, you need to make 700 words just to get to your foundation level. And that doesn't include all the grammar you need to use those words properly. Because without grammar, words mean nothing in that sense. All right? Um, it will give your child confidence. All right? Way to say. Um, for example, um, the way language is taught in schools here is very, very opposite to giving confidence. They're almost being trying to be called out. Spell dog. Uh, P O G. No, I said D O G. And there's no, there's no, there's no second plan B. What if the child doesn't know how to say the word? We shout at the kid and make them repeat the correct spelling over and over again. And that's undermining the child's sense of worth. If, a, if you say to a child, spell dog, and they go, P-O-G, you go, that's a good try, you're almost there, that's really interesting, let's look at those sounds again. And start again, trying to rebuild the confidence. Your child will be able to read new words without waiting to be taught. All right? I once went into an English class after their... Um, I'm not at the Thai bash system, it's just how they work here. But I went into a class after a Thai teacher had been teaching English, and she'd been doing CAT cat now, CAT cat now, and all this stuff, BAT, bad, kang kang kao, and all this stuff. I mean, that's great. So you all know CAT cat, that's great. Well done. Who can tell me what um, MAT spells? And then they went, Teacher, we don't know that. We're waiting for our teacher to tell us. The teacher hadn't taught them anything. The teacher had got them to memorize words. That's not teaching. You've observed our classes long enough to know that we don't do that here. We're not trying, memorization is not learning. Right? Um, so once a child can then take some skill you've given them and then go off to a restaurant with their mum and dad and start decoding words they've never ever seen before. That's the spark. 
right? My, my favourite quote, which isn't the school quote, is from W.D. Yeats, poet, the Irish poet. He says, education is not the filling of a pail, it's the lighting of a fire. You're not trying to fill a bucket with water. Once I've given this kid enough knowledge, they're full, and I've done my job. We don't do that. You're trying to light a fire under that and the kid will boil his own water. You're trying to create a spark so the kid's going to go and fill themselves with the water. Right? They're going to, that's not your job. All right? Reading is not natural. This is very, very important to keep in mind. Reading is not natural. Modern humanity, in its modern quite, in quite sense, is about 12,000 years old. All right? Society, after the last ice age. We began farming about 12,000 years ago. Humans have been on the planet in our current form 100 to 200,000 years, or 300,000 years. You know, homo, 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 that's homo sapiens, but you know, there have been human forms, humanoids, on the planet for over a million years. As far as we know, we've always been able to communicate with each other, whether it's through grunts, pointing, hand gestures, body language, hitting them with a stick. It's communicating. And you could take any child on the planet that's functional, normal, that hasn't got any issues, developmental issues, and you could put that child, one year old, anywhere on the planet. Papua New Guinea, the Alps, the Andes, you could put a child anywhere in the world, about one year old, and within two years they're speaking that language. Right? And no one's disagreeing with that, right? But this immersion just works. Because you are set up to speak, listen, to what you do. As, as an animal, it's what makes us above the rest of the animal world. However, having said all of that, writing only began between five and seven thousand years ago. So we've been on the planet for millennia, millennia, tens of thousands of years, and in the modern form, over ten thousand. And we never learned to read and write. It never came out, and it began with pictograms, cuneiform, then using Mesopotamia. And then it moved on after that into the uh, hieroglyphics. And then slowly over time it morphed into a decodable alphabet. Right? I mean, even the Chinese system, as far as I'm aware, is still pictograms. It's still, the image doesn't have an internal sound, it's just an internal meaning. Right? In my opinion, the English language is the most refined, the English written form is the most refined. We're down to 26 characters with no tone marks. We've done quite well, I think. All right, so that's really important. So, if we do that, reading is not natural. What it means is you can't just leave a kid in a library with books and they'll, they'll read. It's also similar, we don't think in numbers or letters, we think in pictures, right? Right, yes. Just read, that's why reading is not natural, because we're not thinking in letters. That's right. And also, we really need rules towards that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if I said my sentences grammatically incorrect, you still would probably get the meaning based on gist and intonation and stuff. Um, but even with reading, you can do weird stuff with the brain, right? Have you ever seen that one where they swap yeah. the middle letters of every word around? As long as the first and last letter of every word is the same, you your brain will still decode it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there's like an email that just says, if you're reading this now, your brain is a an amazing thing. And every word in that is swapped in the middle. All the letters are mixed up except for the first and last letter. And your brain still decodes it. Yeah. Which is great. Maybe not if you're dyslexic or have a learning issue, I don't know anything about it. So anyway, let's, that, that's the background to why we do phonics. Right? Now let's look at the what is phonics and then the how. This is the why so far. You need to have a structured theory and it has to be in a structure, in order. It's not a guessing game. That's the beauty of phonics. Even someone that hasn't got a lot of experience teaching can still be very successful in phonics. Even parents, when you're talking to customers, parents can teach phonics themselves. You don't need to be a master teacher. All you've got to do is follow the steps. All right? Just like driving a car, riding a horse, skateboarding, whatever it is you're into, you know that you don't have to be the world's most capable person to be able to pull off basic tasks. All right. So, let's click on the What is a letter? Have you ever thought about that? Is it a picture? 
I'm going to sell the next screen very briefly. But yes, oh, no. a letter. Think about a letter, right? A letter is a picture. Let me, let me give you some examples of what I mean. Um, we, we just all agreed one day as humanity. Not one, I'm sure there's a date fixed. I'm sure someone online will tell me the exact date. But we once agreed that this little circle that we also pop a hat and a tail on has, 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 has meaning. It's only a picture, but it is. It could be anything. I mean, we could dig two of them if you want. And it doesn't really matter. It's just a picture. Um, that picture has no meaning. The only meaning that picture has is the meaning we as a society agree to give it. That's it. If we all decided that was the letter A, then it would be. The meaning is fluid. It's fixed in a dictionary. This is something I'm not going to get into today. This is called uh, centrifugal centripetal language. Language has um, entropy. Language wants to blow up. Which is like cool can mean good and cold. In the 90s, bad meant good. Yeah. Wicked means awesome. Yeah. Language wants to explode and have all the meanings everywhere. But the dictionary is putting it back together to have a certain defined meaning. And then in between those two points of entropy, which is complete, you know, this first sort of meaning to fixed meaning, we find slang in the middle of that somewhere. But the written form of language doesn't have that problem, or the written phonic form, because it is fixed, A to Z. I don't know what I'm trying to pretend it works. So a letter is a picture. Here's a picture. That's a picture right there. It's just a little circle with a tail on the bottom. And there's a picture too. Now, I know you're learning to read Thai. I know your Thai is not bad. They just have that. Uh, I don't even know why, but you might, you might have seen some of the Thai letters, right? Yeah, you might have seen some. Now, a picture has a name. We name them. That one is called G. That's the name of it. And that one is called Guy. Some people like to say Gar Guy, but it's not called Gar, it's called Guy. Gar is the phonic sound of the letter. A, picture, a letter has a name. It's really important, yeah? A letter has a sound. Now, the sound of that picture is good. The sound of that picture is good. Good. It's good. When you say ga, oh, oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's like the Thai version of the schwa sound. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, and I think my, um, yeah, so we've got a letter, there's a picture, a name, and a sound. And I keep accidentally getting on with this. But one of them doesn't matter. One of them is not important. Which one would you recommend? Which one is no good? Which one don't you need? Uh, the name. Yeah, right. At first. Pretty much never. Okay. Generally. Okay. Have you thought about it? When, is, when do you need to use the name of a letter? When you're spelling a word for someone else. Yeah. We've definitely had this chat. Yes, we have. <laughs> we, we, we do know each other, by the way. It's not like <laughs> random strangers on the street. Yeah, they do hang out with me and we do talk about you, Katie, because that's, that's what our life's all about. We sit around the pub talking about people. It's almost as if you practice what you preach. <laughs> almost, right? It's almost like I do what I say, right? <laughs> By the way, the people here in the room, if you are, if anyone in the YouTube world is watching, they have seen me teach, they have been in my class, and they have seen this in action. You just might not know what you are seeing. Yes, for those at home, the only time you need to know the name of the letter is when you are giving or receiving the spelling. Right? When you're reading a letter, you do not go C A T cat W E N T went T O two T A T the S H O P shot. You don't do that. You just immediately decode. Uh, I don't remember now to full full disclosure. This is a massive PowerPoint with loads of different lectures all mixed up. And I've tried, I was in a very big hurry today when we arrived. I think I've got all the right PowerPoints set up, all those pages. But just in case we don't, let me just be very clear about some terms, some definitions that you as teachers and administrators of the school need to know. The concept of receptive and productive language. 
I don't know if this is going to come up. If it does, great. If not, we'll do it right now. Okay, we're still actually on there. Oh, great, we are still working. Great. We're still, we're still live on Facebook? I hope so. Good, good. Right. Receptive and productive. Quite productive. For some reason, I need to start throwing away these pens. They're all getting old. Let's see this again. Receptive English of language. Versus productive. Men, do you know what that means? Do you have any idea what I mean by these? Receptive, productive. Uh, no, I don't know. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Have we talked about this previously, directly? No, but just from what the word to receive and receptive, I'm guessing one is one is um, receiving and one is producing. Can you give me an example of receiving language? When someone tells you what something's What called? are you doing? Listening. Listen. 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 Great. Listening. Listening is a very important form of receptive language. Because without listening, you're not really communicating, are you? Um, I know you're in the process of learning, I know you've been here a while, and your English is great. So we're all, to an extent, language learners, to a different level. So when you first came to Thailand, and when I first went to other countries, like Nepal and India, and our languages like I did accomplish, did you notice that like, when you were listening, it was just a non-stop babble of sounds? Yes. Like, blah, 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 and you're like, that's nonsense to me. Not, not one of that makes sense. Or when you were a kid, learning English, and you don't know what that meant. And after a certain amount of time, your ears tune in like a radio. And then slowly you start hearing little chunks of sound come out. And you might hear, oh, he asked me a question. Because I said, they might have at the end of that. Right? And I know you're, you're actually actively learning time, right? Maybe you're, you're at school studying. So this is your ears adjusting to the receptive aspect of, of, of language. That's, that's an audio. What, what would you say is the opposite of that in the productive sense then? Writing? Speaking. Oh, speaking. Yes, sorry. Excellent. You're producing language. Think about what we're talking about today. Reading times. Reading. You're receiving language. Someone has put some language down on a piece of paper and you're receiving it. Right. Right. Yes. Which comes first? Receptive or productive? Receptive. Every time. Every time. So, Ern, you might have a situation whereby a new student arrives and um, the teacher says to you, kid's doing great, we're fine with that, we're all good with the kid. And then the parent comes in and says, no, my child doesn't know any English. They know nothing. The answer is, well, what was the teacher assessing? Teacher was assessing the child's ability to sit, behave, modify their behavior in other in classroom, pay attention, have a good attitude, and follow instructions or commands in a game environment or a fun setting, because we work with a lot of young learners. And the teacher assessed this child is receiving language. This child is in what we call the silent phase right now. The kid's not ready to start producing, but it gets a lot of what's going on. Like men, okay, I'm, 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 we're going to have to use the people in the room as specific examples because we know each other. Yeah. We're friends, so it's easy, right? I know you don't speak Thai, beyond a certain level, whatever it is, but I bet you understand a lot more than you speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you go to 7-Eleven or you go to the bike shop, you might have trouble expressing the car rating needs a clean. But when he tells you the car rating needs a clean, you go, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Right? Yeah, totally. Exactly. Um, you're learning to read and write time. Are you capable right now of reading a few quick sentences in a row? Not right now, on the camera, yeah. generally. Are you at that level now? Are you reading sentences? Dependent on the vocab used, if it's specific or not, but yeah. yeah. Based on what you've been taught, based yeah. on the content yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. How good are you at writing all that stuff now? If you were said, like, Dave, just write me 100 words about yourself, here's a pen and a bit of paper, how much time do you want? Probably an hour. <laughs> right? Yeah. How long would it take to read 100 words? Probably 15 minutes, if that. Right. There you go, very simple. Right. That's just an example of that. So let's just leave that there for now. Um, one other thing that I want to mention, just while we're on camera, and while I know this doesn't come up in it, um, just because it comes up in another lecture I do, but I want to add it to you guys, and I want you to understand this as well. 
Do you understand the difference between fluency versus accuracy? I know we've had this chat, I think. Yeah. Right? To be fluent, what would you say is the definition of fluency? Just being able to communicate, yeah. even, even if it's not correct. Yeah. A general understanding of what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I think if you look it up in the OED, the Oxford English Dictionary, please look OED, that's what we're talking about. Um, fluency basically means the ability to communicate without stress or anxiety or feeling disturbed by your need to communicate. You're basically confident enough to do it. And accuracy means to be correct. I think we know which comes first. Fluency. Fluency, yeah. People seem to say to me, oh, Joe, you're fluent in Thai. Dude, I've been fluent since my first year. Because I'm just confident and cocky and arrogant and I didn't care about being wrong. And I'm walking around town talking Thai to everybody. This is what you're wrong. Butchering. Yeah, 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 butchering. I'm like just murdering all the tones and the grammar. But like, I mean, just one example I like to use is as a teacher, this is really important though. So what if a child comes up to you and says, uh, teacher, me need go to toilet? What do you do? Let go to the toilet, yeah, yeah. And that's it. They, they communicated with you. They came up to you and they told you a basic human need. and need the bathroom. Yeah. Is that the right moment to jump on them and say, you got it wrong? No. Your grammar was wrong. Get it wrong anyway. Me need go to toilet. What's that? Me? Me? Ah, you mean. You don't do that. Yeah. You just give them a massive high five, give them a huge thumbs up, even give them a hug if it's the first time they've spoken to you like that, and then uh, show them where the bathroom is and they go, no. Yeah. An example as a grown up, me coming to Thailand, <coughs> I was convinced I'd never learn Thai. I thought it was impossible. It was just a crazy language, but it's not. And I remember going to my local curry shop, and I remember saying to them, um, um, yeah, you, 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 and you, 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 Obviously, she looked around her, she was in a curry shop. I'm pointing at the curry and pointing at rice, saying, Kao, Geng, 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 Mek, Mek, Kao. She said, what? And she went, oh, you want some curry and rice? She said, small victory, right? Yeah, yeah, why? I've got my rice, I've got my food. <laughs> and every day I kept doing this. And then one day she said to me, like, hello, Jay, it's Kao. Kao, Kao. I was like, okay, yeah. Um, Geng, like, Kao. And if it's a hard day for now, yeah, and then over about six months, she eventually, I felt confident enough to take instruction. And eventually, I was able to say, oh, And I'd be like, um, I was like, let, rice, and, so you gap. Using the wrong conjunctive and using connection words, using all the wrong tones. But if she'd have known what would be the accurate from day one, I would have never ever had the confidence to get better. That's really important when you're working with very young learners. Take your small victory to where you can. And take every victory for what it is, a victory and an accomplishment for that child. It sends me crazy when I hear incompetent teachers and um, insensitive parents, very nice way of putting it, just berating children. I told you that four times already, why can't you do it? Yeah, you said it, you didn't teach anything. Okay, let's move on. I just wanted to do a little side note on that. Okay, test question. If I've already told you the answer, don't pretend you did. You don't. If I've not told you it, you can have a guess. How many sounds are in the English language, right? It's okay if you get it wrong. Mm. <laughs> you <a> nervous laugh. <laughs> what do you reckon? Twenty-three. What do you reckon? Sixty. What do you reckon? 
Probably like 12 or something, isn't it? <laughs> well, most people, because you know me enough already, you know that it's not a straightforward answer. Most people... Say 26, then. Well, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, B, F, 26 letters of the alphabet. But they're just the pictures we use to en encode our language. By the way, encoding, decoding. Encoding. The written form is only a code, by the way. You know, you've done that as a kid, right? 1 equals A, 2 equals B, C equals 3, 3 equals C, and then you're asked to write your name in code. Mm -hmm. You know, basic coding skills, right? All language is, the written, its written form and its spoken form is code. When I say the word chair, it's code for that object. Is there any chairiness about that? Is there anything chair-like about it, other than the fact that we call it a chair? If we decided it was a table, would it be a table? Yeah, if we are. Because it's, it's yes. not an innate quality. Chair isn't a quality. It's like when I studied semantics at uni, or liter literacy at uni, the first lesson was, does wood have a certain woodiness about it? Please discuss. <laughs> right? So you're encoding. You are creating a code that you can then give on to somebody else whether it's oral or written. And reading and listening is decoding. This will inform your lesson planning and your syllabus planning. You don't worry about this until they can decode. It will inform how you approach a child when you assess the child. You might say, actually, the child's actually pretty good at decoding, but their encoding sucks. Or they're decoding well, which is not right. I would like to do a refining session with the kid on that get mastery of it, then move on to encoding later. But of course, there is also, they feed into each other. You're not, you're not trying to get the kid a fluent reading before you ask them to speak. It's being done at the same time as staggered, but you know there is a priority, one comes before the other. So keep checking this camera, because I've never gone live before. Make sure we've got at least some people watching. Stop recording. Okay, the answer to my question. Over 44. It depends on who you ask. Polyphonics today covers 44 symbols. Alright? Um, is there any difference between British English and American English with sounds? How many sounds there would be? No. Not, not as far as we're worth how many, no. Um, but there is definitely, obviously, spelling differences. Yes. Which we're all aware of, yeah. but mainly the U. Um, the main reason for that is that we have French feeding into our language, okay. and you have Italian. Okay. But the Italians arrived before the French, even though the French wanted to help me liberate you from those evil British. <laughs> um, we have the French. So all my American buddies I used to live with, like, color, like, do me a favor, Jay. Like, <laughs> just screw with me. Um, Johnny Phonics, which we are going to focus on today, um, does have two products. It has a British English and an American English. Okay. And the songs are very British. Ah, ah, ants on my arm, ah. It's very English. Very, all my American friends find it very, very quaint. Very English. Um, I've never seen the American product, no, but, cool. but I imagine it's the exact same breakdown because the research that's gone into this is so deep. All right. Here's an example, if people don't believe you, of the basic 44 sounds. Right? Um, and in addition to that, there's, and this is the order in which they're taught, we'll talk more about that later. In addition to this, I, I can give you copies of all these, don't worry. Uh, right here, I think, here's an example. Hey, I've actually printed out already. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So if you don't have access to this one, we can get you it. But uh, in addition to that, there's the backside. I don't know if you've seen the backside yet. Oh, something happened there. There we go. Yeah, we click So there, there's your basic. And then you've got alternative sounds. Words are the same sound. This is why English can be so confusing. All right, this is a big one. I can be spelt four different ways. Like pi, sky, time, night. That's all the I sound. 
This is you, not u. You. Like Tuesday. Few. There's not too many of these words. Oi. Quill. Toy. Ow. Out. Cow. They're the same sound, aren't they? Oh, this is another one. Oh. 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 Talk. Crawl. Fault. Oh. Fall. That's R. No. No. What would it be? Oh. Cart. There you go. Cart. And. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can say I'm really unprepared for this. Oh, 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 A, 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 all right? It's interesting, because my name gets spelled this way in India and this way in Thailand. In India, they spell my name that way. It's interesting. Okay, there are two types of phonics. This is where we're getting at the okay? I've given you a background. I want to get your minds right. Get your mind at the same time. Right, two main types of phonics. Do you know any of them, by the way? Do you know any of this yet? Synthetic and monosaur? Synthetic and analytic. Analytics, okay. Which is monosaur stuff. Okay. Analytical. Analytic. They're synthetic and analytical. Two types of phonics. Synthetic and analytical. Now, when you were saying that the word, the, 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 that letter in Thai, if you were saying that this letter, is gar. That, that, that in my mind is the analytical code of the bit. It's not gar. Because when you say the word, this word here, you can read that word. What does that say? E. But if that's gar, it would be gar. Yeah. No? If that is gar, if that sound is gar, you would read gar. It sounds good. It's good. It's good. E D. So when they say gar, they're, they're adding this sound that's not there. That happens. You'll hear this, and it'll ring a bell for you, definitely, and definitely because you have a young son who studies school as well, and he might be doing this if he's doing it phonics. It's called the schwa sound. I have a video on YouTube that has like 1.5 million views, and in it I did A to Z sounds, and I added the schwa sound by accident. I didn't think of it. I just did it. I just did a video. Added to our sound, it's gone a bit viral. But I keep trying to tell everybody that's not the best video. The schwa sound's not the one I want. I've got another video doing the exact same thing with no schwa sound, but it's only got 5,000 views. Because who knows what makes things viral in this world of man I don't know what <laughs> happens, right? It gets retweeted once or reshared once and goes viral. But it's the wrong video to be paid popular. All right? The schwa sound is the uh. That's the video I found you on. Right, that's how you found me from that video, yeah. right? So, the schwa sound is the uh, a, b, k, d, e, f, g, h, i, l, j, k, k, l, l, m, n, o, p, q, r, s, t, v, w, z. It's not, there's none of that's in there. That's the equivalent of doing the ga instead of g. And that's when, so for example, the synthetic has no schwa sound, it's what we call the pure sound. So instead of, how about this one? Can you, can you, can you do this after me? Can you do that? Yeah. This is when, if you're used to teaching this way, it's actually quite difficult to get out of that habit. It's quite difficult. Here's another one. It's really important to be very aware of that when you're studying. It is not t. t, t. And it's this, the 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 and the vowel sounds don't happen. A, E, I, O, U. There's no schwa sound there. Because you can't put a schwa sound on the vowel sound. That would be the sound. That's the idea. That's the main difference. Not the main. It, it's one of the, 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 the characteristic differences between synthetic and analytical. Is that we don't use the schwa sound here. We use a pure sound. So you might need um, 
if you're teaching phonics, to make yourself prepped on this. If you've got six to eight letters you want to work with, make sure you've made a mental note. It's not b c d f. f. It's b c d f. f. So in other words, learn this way first. Yeah. Like, before you teach the class. Yeah. F. All right. Um, pure sound. S. T. T. M. Class sound? Pure sound. Yes. Good. Um, full disclosure, I don't know the phonic alphabet. There's this alphabet that has E's backwards and lines through it and all this. And I, guess all the yeah. Yeah. I never went to learn that. I have friends that can, that can write that out fluently. I, I just never did and I never needed to because... Is that necessary? Like how necessary is that? Great skill. Okay. I'd never say don't if you want to. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's education, right? Yeah. Go and do that. Uh, but I don't know enough about it. I'm not an expert on that. I've never... I mean, most... In full honesty, most of the things I get good at, or I'm knowledgeable on, have been through work, where people have hired me and said, Jay, I need a lecture on this. And I've gone, yeah, sure, I can do that. And I've crap, and I've gone home and read, like, as many books as I can get my hands on over a week, and, 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 and you know, crash course myself. But no one's ever asked me to do that. I'm sure if anybody does want to hire me, Teach. Teach that. I could do that too. It wouldn't be a big deal. It's not difficult. So, this is how it's been taught previously. C A T cat male. That's Thai word for male meaning cat. We don't do that. All right. Um, if you got the child just to go cat cat, and you got them to blend the word cat together, and then you showed them that picture. There's no need to translate the picture. All right? Again, this is not to my top quality. I haven't had time to sit and edit the PowerPoint to our, our quality, the higher standards as normal, but, but let's see what we get. Um, well, what I mean by this, this is really important to me as well. Children are not stupid. This is something that a lot of teachers really wind me up about it. They, they, I get grumpy about this. Kids are as intelligent, if not more, as you and me and everyone else in the room. I don't think IQs get higher as you get older. I think you know, your IQ is about how you, you study and who you are. Like, so for example, if I said to you the word, say you knew nothing about Thai, and I said, you just teach me Thai, and I go to you, girl, girl, you, 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 I'm pretty sure you're not going to think I'm teaching you with a finger. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, you look, it's a cup. Obviously that's the word for cup or glass, or girl cafe, or whatever I'm going to call it. Or you know, like, Baka. What does that mean to hold? Of course not. I'm holding up a pencil. A pen. You know it means pencil, right? A pen, right? So they, you, you know, don't, don't. A lot of teachers feel like they need to translate everything immediately. We don't do that. Yeah, that, that's a really bad idea. So um, this is obviously this lecture usually uh, is done for Thai teachers and parents and. Uh, people that are designing the syllabus for schools. Now, what, what you might see in a lot of books, and I see this everywhere, and I wish we could stop it, um, you'll see, like, um, like I mean, you might see an English phrase book for ties, and it will be like, how are you? And then it, then it might be like, couldn't say anything, maybe I'll be translated to Thai there. But then underneath this, they might then decide. The right the sounds? Yeah, like. Like, how are you? Maybe the whole or something. Mm -hmm. Like, sorry, I didn't add it. Like, like they, might, they might give you the transliterated sounds there. That's just a really, really bad idea. Just like it's a really bad idea to try and learn Thai by using ABC. Karaoke. Karaoke time. It will only get you so far. You'll never be able to have a fluid con well, fluid you would. You'd never have, to have an accurate conversation <laughs> in Thai. An accurate conversation in Thai, learning Thai with karaoke letters. You need to know the time for that. And the time marks. And the process of doing, and if you don't want to do that, I will actually teach you that. That's straightforward. There's a reason for I don't need to ask you this. 
Or maybe I should ask you this. I should certainly ask you this. How many enzymes are there in Thai? Two. Like oh, final three. three. How many end consonants are there? The end here, they will go stop consonants. Like it's bad cats. Lap. Oh, no. few. There's none, right? No, I'm sorry. There are eight. Make up, make up, make up, make on, make on, make on, make on, make Yeah? So what they did, they're called Begna, that's what they're called. But in the Thai language, I know when this isn't our Thai, it doesn't really matter. In the Thai language, you can only have eight final stop sounds. They're called sonorant or stop. Sonorant is mmm, mmm, mmm. It's sonorant, it rings out, as opposed to mat, mat, stop. If they were vowel endings, they have lots. You have lots of vowel endings, but these are final consonant endings. In English, there are over 20. Almost every consonant can be a final sound, right? And we can all think of words that end with B, C, D, and F, G, H, you can't. J can be an ending, kind of like Raj, Raja. Yeah, you, you can do that, right? But Thai can only have eight. So what, what a lot of schools are trying to do is a really bad idea is squeeze the Thai language, the English language into Thai letters. And that's where a lot of the kids you might meet are coming from. They're coming from this world where they only have ever learned karaoke English, where they're reading English with Thai letters. And that's why, and I'm not being sure if it's true, that is why they are speaking it like this, I can't speak English, because they are speaking English only in the Thai letter. So letter, they are speaking English from Thai letter. That's how you can do the fake Thai accent in English because it's all in the Thai accent, all right? Here's an example of what I mean. We've got one Thai person in the room. So, this is a... Now let's spell that in Thai letters. Can you read that for me, please? In Thai. No. Because it's called quality. Right? And that one? Are they different or the same? In the sound? They're exactly the same. I've put a P ending there and a B ending there. But in the Thai language, P's and B's are the same ending, which is a B ending. So you can't in Thai have cap. It would only have a big cap. Alright? So don't, don't get in the habit, and I've seen native English speakers that can speak a bit of Thai getting on the board and writing stuff out in Thai for the kids. But you don't have it. You're not paid for that. You're not there to start writing Thai letters on the board. You're an incompetent teacher at that point. Don't do it. It's just pointless. What are you even telling that for? You may as well be the only doctor and, and do that much better than us. And his Thai is much better than our Thai. <laughs> right? So there's no need for you to be there if you're going to be writing Thai in the world. Right? So there's no point. Um, and this again is for the Thai people. But um, can you read that for me? Uh, but read it as a Thai. Read it like Thai properly. I would I would like to eat an apple in my office at Sakun. And there's no way of writing any better because that's a cook glamour. There's an at in the middle there. At becomes a D at the end instead of a T and at. Um, apple. You can't have an L and D in Thai. Sakun. 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 Yeah, yeah, right? I go to Sakun today in the office. Oh, see you in the office at Sakun, man. Yeah. Right? I mean, obviously, that's what it should say, and, and obviously what they're missing out is all the end sounds. I would like to eat an apple in my office at school. And in Thai, that's a blended sound. Not sack. Or a consonant cluster. Um, so let me talk about Montessori first. All right, this is the analytical, which is what we do not do here. You do need to understand the difference between the two. There are five steps to Montessori phonics. 
I'm gonna, I'm, 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 and Montessori is not what it always is. It's, it's analytical phonics, Montessori being one of the types. Okay. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to not call it Montessori because someone from the school of Montessori is going to get on board and shout at me. Let's use the word analytical. If I do slip into the word Montessori, I apologise to the Montessori people because they are really good schools and they do a lot of good math stuff and they have some really good ideas. But I'm going to talk about phonics right now. There are five steps. You cannot jump them. You cannot miss them out. If you're given a blank child, a blank, and the child has no phonics, you can't just jump to, oh, they're 15, they need to be reading already. You still need to begin a step. And if anybody ever says to you, can you please assess my child's phonic ability? This is the check you do. You have a little test with five levels in it, and you see how far through the five levels the kid gets. And that tells you exactly where the child's at with their phonics. Step number one, phonic awareness, the alphabet. Phonic awareness is not phonics. Phonic awareness is the understanding that a picture has a name and that name has a sound. So a picture has a name, and that picture also has a sound. It's not learning A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You're learning names. It's realizing there is a relationship between this image that someone has taught you, and you've been named that image P. And that image has a relationship to the sound. That's what phonic awareness is. Teaching children that these images you see everywhere in your life, all over cups, all over signs, all over TVs, have sounds. Because don't forget, it's not natural. It's not natural to read them. Children are not just going to figure it out. They're not, they're not ancient cryptologists, right? They're not able to figure out and decode English. I decoded the Thai alphabet, but already knowing that it was a code, already having my own Rosetta Stone, like having my own language to compare with, and having various phrase books to copy. And then I went, nobody ever taught me to read time. But it took me years, you know, three years, and then you come ahead and learn it in one year, right? Yours is way more efficient having an instructor, so, so that's better. Um, this is what a lot of people get the wrong way around. A lot of parents on my YouTube ask me this a lot, all right? So, you basically begin by having a child understand that there are 44 pictures. Oh, actually, sorry. In, in analytical, we just did the 26 letters. In analytical, they don't do the 44. I'm so sorry, I'm mixing up my own jolly phonics now. In analytical phonics, you learn the 26 sounds of the alphabet. And they do it this way. And not everybody, this is how a lot would do. A, A, apple, B, B. Bat, C, C, Cat, D, D, D. And it's used a lot in Thailand, in Asia, and in countries that are struggling to push forward with their education because it's easy. It's very easy, it's very straightforward, it doesn't take much energy from the teacher, and um, you get results quickly. But they're not really quality results. For example, you might have a child go, Cat, Cat. M and man -n -n. and they're adding a schwa to everything. Um, the negative of this is the child needs to learn way too much before they're getting success. This is why, they don't ask you why do you not teach this. You can say, well, it's not as qualitative in my opinion, it's not deep. But more than that, or in addition to that, you're asking a child to learn all 26 letters of the alphabet the names of all 26 letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the sound of all 26 letters, and a related vocabulary word. You're asking my child to learn, oh, I won't have it's like a year doing that, it doesn't matter, three years doing that, but the point is, a child's memory, or any human's memory, our short-term memory, our, our temporal memory is like a mobile phone, the RAM gets low. Your running memory, your running active memory gets low. It's very difficult to remember all that. And there's no need to remember all that. 
You know, why would you need to learn S sut snake? Can't you just learn tss? That's more efficient, right? Yeah. Just learn tss. That's it. All right? And with Johnny Phonics, which we'll get through in a minute, you don't need to know the alphabet. But with this, you do. You need to know all the letters in advance and their sounds. Once a student has learned A to Z analytically, and their related sounds, you then move on to what you call short vowels, which is the beginning of phonics. And you begin with vowel consonant blends, what we call VC, vowel consonant. The short vowel. In the Thai language, they begin with long vowels. Thai language has short and long vowels. A, A, E, E, U, U. And they always begin with the long vowel. So it's Ga, E, G, G, E, G, E, not Ga, E, G. Yeah, Ga, U, Gu, G, Gu, E. Those kind of things, right? We begin with the short vowel. <clears throat> Once the child is comfortable with that, you add another consonant to the beginning. This is the time when it's a really good idea to spend a lot of time on this. Generally in all phonics, even with the, 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 the synthetic. It's really challenging for a young learner to identify by listening the different vowel sounds. Especially if you've got an American accent. I, I, I'm to this day still not sure in American accent the difference between this and this. What's in English, or British English, a, e. Yeah. In American, e. That's not a, though, is it? I couldn't tell you, honestly. I'm learning my phonics from you. But when you, well, what, how, how would you say that sound in American, and you're like, it's a thing, I don't know. Okay. I mean, a. Also, say that word for me. Cat. Cat. Yeah. Okay, cat. Yeah. And then that word? Okay. Okay, there is a difference. Good, good means you're clear on it then. For me, um, I find it quite challenging. I find Americans tend to use E for A, the A letter. I don't have to use the nasal letters too much in today's seminar. But there's more of an X sound coming out of it. And then when a child or a parent has their child changed from an American tutor to an English tutor, I notice it a lot. When I bring the kids in here and I say an at word, they do the E action. They're confused by that. It's fine, it's all right, it doesn't matter. But anyway, having a child be able, if you say, the idea is you, you should be able to have five vowels in front of you, and you should be able to say any CVC word, and the child should be able to tell you what the middle vowel is. All right? And then that's, that's a challenge. Bat, hat, hit, het, hot, hut. Quite difficult sounds. Once the child is up to this, you could then add CC VC words. Okay? Um, <clears throat> consonant clusters, they're called. There's initial and terminal. Initial, the beginning, terminal, the end. I have some resources to show you that. And I'm just going to show you how you do this. So there you go. Once you've, you've got this, you then move on to the long vowels, which is what used to be called the magic E. Magic what? Magic E. E. Magic E. Oh, magic E. Have you ever heard of the magic E rule? Have not. Okay. You don't really use it here, but you will have to use it in other places. Magic E rule is that the E turns the short vowel into a long vowel, and the long vowel happens to be the name of it. So, for example, mat a a a becomes.
becomes mate. A, 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 a. Yeah, mate. Yeah? Ka, K, A, A. Tim, time. Ko, Ko. So the child, and that's another good practice at this point. If I'm saying the word, you should have one vice or sign says short and one says long. And you say a word and then you have to tell me is that short or long, short or long, short or long. It's their receptive tuning. These are all activities, by the way, that you can use at any given moment in a class when you realise that you, you, your lesson plan is not up to speed or it's not up to quality or what do I do? What am I supposed to do with this dead time? These are all great activities. Can you make these words for me? Can you identify a vowel sound? Can you tell me if it's long or short? And the trick is to make it engaging by using objects, fly swaps, sticky balls, balloons you can pop, stupid hats they wear, anything to engage them physically. Because it's a boring subject. Children do not find this fun. Right? And then we do constant blends. Now, now these two can be swapped. It depends on what book you're using and what your preference is. Because, as I said, short vowels can have constant blends as well, right? Like, 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 um, like slip, slap, slop. They're consonant blends with a short vowel. It's up to you. And then the five, fifth one would be unusual spellings and random words that don't fit into it. Or in the, in the analytical stuff, that's more like digraphs, diphthongs. Ch, ch, th. And then a as in ai, ie for i, that kind of stuff. O, u for o. And that's how you teach analytical things. So if anybody ever asks you, can you come and work for me, we teach analytics. Well, you can say to them, what kind of phonics do you use? And if they don't know, you know, you're going to look like the pro, right? And you say, well, do you do word families? And if they say, yeah, they're like, oh, right, so you use analytical. Yeah, I know about that. The five stages, which book we have at the moment. I'm going to show you very briefly what they talk about when I say word families. What, this is where, in my mind, Analytical shows fall short compared to synthetic. In synthetic, you synthesize the sound. You synthesize the sound you've learned in order, blending it together to create a phone or an individual sound, which the person listening understands as having meaning, and we're getting very deep now, but that meaning conveys meaning to the person, right? This does less of it. This is a little bit more like rote learning for me. A little bit like memorization. But let's look at the at, at family. Now, the way you teach this, I do have videos out there. You can look into this. I've got phonics stage one, stage two, stage three videos. Because I used to teach this before Johnny Phonics. I've still got all the videos out there. They're still really popular on my, on my uh, YouTube. But uh, let's see if we can find something like that. So, let's have a these here, actually. So, the way you would do it is this. I hope that the camera hasn't flipped when we're doing this. I hope it isn't. Is that the right way around still? Yeah? Let's see. Okay, so you basically review with the kids, okay? I'm going to do as if you guys are the students, all right? Okay? So I'm going to show you how you do this. Let's very briefly, students, review a sound. Please repeat after me. Ah, ah, ah. T. I'm using the shy sound. Ah, ah, ah. T. T. Ah, T. Ah, T. At, 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 at. That you now learn is a single sound. At. Okay? We now have a sound in our hand. It's an at sound. Or at. Let's that. But you don't say that at. You say at, at, at. So when you blend it, you miss off the shot sound at the end. Hopefully they will deduct that. Thing. Then we learn a second sound. But. At, at, but, at, but, at, bat, but, at, bat. And you get to that chant at the end, but, at, bat. And then once you've got this routine going with them, and they get it, you can move forward quite quickly. Which is why this is quite popular. Because it is easy to move forward. So you go, but, at, and you slowly move stuff together. At, at, at. Excellent. Then you review your initial consonants you need for the group. But, k, f, h, m, p, r, s. And that's your lesson for the first day. 
of this, this section. You've got a group of kids, you've got your syllabus, I'm going to teach the at sound. Great, let's practice that, let's get them fluid in this. Once everybody knows all these sounds really well, I'm ready to move forward. Maybe not in one lesson. That might be the week you might be doing at. If you're working in a school Monday to Friday with kindergarten kids, you might have the at week. And that's Monday's class. Yeah, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, you practice all the words. Thursday, you produce it. Friday, you, you consolidate. And then you, you basically just go through it. That's it. They're not idiots. You can show them the image. They know that there's a word, and they can go at, at, b, at, bat. It's the same with that. Once they've got familiar with it, you don't need to keep blending the at every time. They've got at as a sound now. F, at, fat, h, at, hat. M, a m, at, mat. H, at, pat. R, r, at, rat. I'll mix up something I want to S, at, sat. Okay? That's the at family. That's stage two, C, V, C. So if everyone says to you, oh, we're doing CVC words, you know what they mean. That's not my shorthand, it's general shorthand for that, 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 that subject. Um, and there's lots of them. These are all different word families that you'd work through. This would be in a phonics book two. If you were doing the, the analytical, this would be phonics book two. Phonics book one would just be A to Z, with a picture of each, a word, an a apple, and they trace the word a a a a a a apple, and um, Colour it in, yay, book two, b, a letter, b, page two, b, 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 b. But once you're into book two, you know, like, hen, and you teach them all the exact same way. So in a way, it becomes a bit boring. I mean, in a way, it's, I mean, it's down to how, how creative you are, how much fun you can make this. For example, um, I, I, I used to work with a really cool Filipino man who used to get the kids to hop to the k at. And the kid does the hop to cut and say, cut, and does the hop to at, and go, at, cat. And go, okay, jump like a crow, jump like a, uh, uh, a kangaroo to man. And then they have to jump, jump, move, and man. And then, you know, or you get sticky balls, and you have to like get an initial sound and a constant blend and blend words together. Um, go on my, my Facebook, my YouTube page, there's loads and loads of videos like this. Um, there's one bag of consonants and one bag of VC letters. And, Kids have to like play a game, and when you freeze, whoever's in the spot has to pick out the, the, the one, and another kid picks out another, and they have to put it together and make a word for you. Just things like that. At this level, the decodable sentences are very boring. Decodable sentences, and you'll see them in all the books, they're sentences that can be read by this rule. And you end up with just really nonsense, boring sentences. A man in a van with a hat. A cat on a mat in a hat. A bat in a hat, jam on a rat, a leg on a bed, a frog on a log, and it's just, sorry, I'm watching my language, it's just nonsense. But it works, but it's not really engaging. So if you're interested in any of that, there's a bunch of videos, just go to my YouTube channel and type in CVC Phonics Stage 2, Jay Richardson. Uh, I won't worry about that. There's a game I kind of half showed you the other day. The analytical phonics game. Change the uh to uh uh. We can do it real yeah. quick right now as a group. You can maybe get too. So you're allowed to change one letter. This is fun outside of a phonics class with a P1, P2 group. Just for fun. Don't do a phonics class. Just do this game. Because they don't need to learn that. But, so you're allowed to change one letter. Uh, okay, Dave, I'm going to have to show you this before. You can change one letter. I'm going to change the um, change the H uh, to B, bat. Can you change any letter you want? I'll change the book to cut cat. Cat, we've got cat now. What would you go next? I'll change cut to nice. Can you change the end one? Can you change the end letter for me? The end uh T to P. What is the word? Yeah. Okay. Map. 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 There you Map. go. Okay, I'll change the A to or the A to op mom. And we just keep going. So many words you can get. Some of my top classes can do like 40, 50, 60 words because they've learned the trick to not get down a dead end. There's a dead end way of going. Someone always tries to put sky in or fly or something that just ruins. You're like, <laughs> fay or may. It's like, oh yeah, put an L there. It's like, oh yeah, that doesn't work. We need a van on the middle. Okay, cool. Okay. 
Now, moving on to the, the gold. What is Jolly Phonics? Number one, I do not work for Jolly Phonics. Disclaimer. I'm not for an official Jolly Phonics trainer. There's a guy in Thailand called Lok Chapel. He is. He's a kind of a buddy of mine. Uh, and you can contact Jolly Learning in Bangkok. And they do training for this. This is like a gratis version of that. High speed. He'll do all day on this though. It's synthetical, or synthetic, not analytical. There is no schwa sound, and it has been used in the UK. I don't know if it still is. My, my cousin is a kindergarten teacher. She introduced me to this years ago uh, when I was doing some research. Um, basic skills first. This is where we get lo this way, loads of notes now. Okay, really get all this down. It's really important. Basic skills first. Don't forget, when you're working with young learners, you need to confirm that they know how to write letters properly. I don't really do a session on it, but it's something I observe during class and I watch during class to see if they're doing it correctly. And if they need help, I will correct them. You'll notice in the other classrooms, I have these, this tape on the board. Have you seen all this on the classrooms? There's tape at the bottom of both boards. That's for this. Do you understand what this means, ground grass sky? You do. Do you, do you get this, men? Yes, I do. You already get it. Yes. Some letters are in the grass. Short letters. Little letters. Some letters are in the sky. Some are in the ground. Just keep that in mind. All right. Also, make sure they're forming letters correctly. Another basic skill for you to keep your eye on. This is the kind of stuff that a lot of teachers don't really focus on, and I wish they did because it does help. Attention to detail helps. The other one is pencil grip. You'll remember when your boy was a little kid, everything was like this, everything was big, slowly, so that's, like, that's actually an artist's grip. That's how a lot of artists use their pens now, I think. And there's the tripod grip. We need to get most, all of our kids to basically be on the tripod grip. Uh, I, I never did this, but the, the, the trainer, the trainer Lock, told me about using frog's legs. The idea of there's a frog on a log and he's got his legs. Mm -hmm. A frog on the log. Mm -hmm. Like chopsticks. For now, huh? Maybe, maybe. So. I don't know what that'd be at point. If a child's having trouble with that, get them a bigger pen. That's the cue, that's the trick. If you haven't got a bigger pen, we've got these inserts. Have you seen the little plastic things we've got? They force a tripod grip. With these little things that you slide over a pencil, we've got them here. And it forces the tripod grip because it becomes uncomfortable to do. Look at Maeve, the way Maeve writes. Maeve writes like a riot. Word I'm not going to use in the public. He works like someone that's never been shown up. Maeve writes like this. And they, that will give you tendonitis, man. Now, Maeve writes like this, I think. But then again, she was pre med and she's got a degree in bio, bioengineering. So I'm not going to criticize her. She's way more educated than me. But yeah, you'll see grown adults that write in a strange way. And it gives you tendonitis. Um, that's what we're laying raining for anyway. Oh, there's the real words for it all. If you want it, the lateral quad, quad, quadrupod, quadrupod, I don't know. Now, this is, this is the coolest skill. This skill, I think you and I have talked about this and you found it really challenging. Oh, boy. Sound counting, not letter counting. Yeah. It's really opposite to what we as fluent speakers do. This is a skill that I begin all of my classes with for phonics when it's a, and the beginning part and even with the older kids just for fun every now and then I'll throw out ridiculously long words and get them to count the sounds. You need to practice, the student needs to practice identifying numbers of sounds in a word. All right? That's what the dots are on these cards. That's right, and the other just picked up on the cards with dots. Now, this is really important we're not counting letters, and we're not counting syllables. You know syllable? Okay. We're not counting syllables. It's not syllable. And we're not counting S, Y, L, L, B, L. We're not doing either of that. We're counting 
individual sound utterances, individual sounds that the child can identify. Before they know anything else, that's the game you play. Alright? Now what I mean by that is this. In the first examples, just by coincidence, the number of letters is equal to the number of sounds at the beginning. So, let's, let's count the word cat. Now, what I need you to get in the habit of doing to help yourself, we'll talk later on if we get to our audio-visual kinesthetic, maybe not today, use your body at the same time as you're doing it, physically. So let's do it together, show me your hand. And as I say the sound, show a finger. K-a-t. Can you do that for me, please? K-a-t. That's it. Now, Dave's also doing what I like, and forward, and reading it left to right for the student to look at. The kid can do it any way they like. Yeah. You want to encourage the child to do the same thing as you. The kid's going to do this. But what I mean is, people watching at home, don't forget we, we read left to right. And that's that way for you. Left to right. So the person looking at you needs to be able to go left to right. It needs it backwards for you. When I'm looking at myself, I'm reading right to left. But only because you're facing the person you're teaching. Right? Okay, let's keep going. At. How many sounds in that word? Okay. Well, let's do it then. Let's do it with three sounds. Is it a k-a-r? Depends where you've come from. <laughs> no, so it's two. Ah. Let's do it together. Ah. I also like to tap my foot when I do it. Ah. So you can hear it. Ah. And you can tap it. Because ah is a single sound. Digress and diphthongs. I'm going to get the wrong way around. I think that's a diphthong. Digraphs like ch, ch, did that. Oh, someone will correct me for sure. How about that one? How many sounds? So, about three. Three. Yeah. three. Mm, un, mm, un. Okay, here's a hard one. Four. Yeah, four. Now, what some people do is read, they count it according to the rules. But that's not what I want you to do. You did it right. I want you to count according to the sounds you hear. It's four sounds. It's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. And it's not teacher. This skill could just be your warm-up forever until the kid is just like four, three, six, seven. Enough, I'm done, I've got it. You'll know when you've done it enough. Yeah. They'll just look at you and go, dude, Prowl's very good at this. And they'll go, you know, she's very good at this now. Not going to it This is a skill, man. It takes a while. What I'm going to do now is give you guys a few minutes to see if you can tell me. So you got pen and paper? Yes. Go through those. See how many sounds I've used on for me. Normally I'll put music on now, but it's on the computer, which we're really using. Never mind. How many sounds are in these? Is anybody watching at home? I will move this up a little bit so you can see and try and do it at home as well. I'll maybe take a quick screenshot of that. Let's leave it there maybe. So the question is, how many sounds are these words? recommend you do not try to guess or figure it out in your head. Say it out loud to yourself while counting with your fingers because I can guarantee you've already made one mistake. Which everybody makes. Which is why I've said it. Don't 
try and understand how many there are, try and hear how many there are. When you say the word st, how many sounds are you making? St. St is not a diagram or a diphthong, it's a blend. We have to move on because I want to finish up. I know you, we, we've got things to do at the same time today. I'll move this back. I'll just be real quick about this then. Okay. Pi. How many sounds? Two. Yeah. I. Spit. Spit. How many? Four. Yes. SP is not a single sound. It's two sounds. Ill. Three. Ill. It. Ill. Oh. Ill. Oh. Ill. Oh. Oh. Boat. 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 Firm. You hear what I'm reading now? Firm. This is how to the kids. I'm just saying, kids, firm. How many sounds? You've got to help them get success. You're trying to breed success by helping them without cheating. So one more time. Firm. Firm. How many are you hearing? Three. Three. Firm. Yeah. So when I'm first starting with the kids, I really spoon feed it. I do it like this, right? I. And they just count my fingers at first. And they go, oh. They're little kids, right? And they go, yeah. Firm. And they go, ah, oh, three. And then they count my fingers. And over a certain amount of time, I stop doing that. And I start just tapping the foot. Then I just speak it. And then eventually, I stop doing any of that. And I can just say it. But it's a process. We yeah. talked about the scaffolding. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. This idea of not jumping to the target. Prepare for success. Loads of mini successes. But like, bigger success. Exactly. It's like doing a, a, a BMX trick or a skateboarding trick or whatever it is. You don't just go straight for a half pipe and then fail, break the legs and never do it again. You, you, you give them things you know they can do first before you give them a bigger task. Shadow, how many? Shh. As. Duh. Oh. Shh. And. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 four. Ooh, ing, four. G is its own sound. Ing, I, n, 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 n. NG is its own sound, but I isn't. Ooh, I, n. S, n, ooth. Got it. S, n, it's not sat, n. So this is when the Thai child, or the Asian child, they sound and you go, okay, well, let's count that out. Ah, mm, ooh, let's write that out. Ah, mm, ooh. And then, oh no, there's no ah. You said ah. And there's another game. Reverse dictation. Give them words on cards that we've got a lot of here. And say, you read it to me and I'll write down exactly what you say. And write down exactly what they say. So if, if they say to you, yesterday I went, I went to a shop. I went to shop. I went to shop. Right? You can write down exactly what they say. And then they will self-correct. Let's remove this pig. I think it's a lesson on magic e. Okay. Moving forward. So, this is how I do it with the kids. We have these here, by the way. With all of these cards here. Also, consonant blends at the beginning and final ends of all those here as well. All these resources, we'll look at them later. Obviously, you don't show the other screen to kids with all the words. You show them the object that they know. Show them things that they know. Yeah. Ask them to say what it is, and then ask them, and if they don't know what it is, tell them, and then you count it out together. Ah, brr, Hour. Okay, we've done this. See, this is me, and yeah, this is my um, PowerPoint repeating itself. Now, Jolly Phonics, this is where we're going to get a bit detailed, is taught 
in groups of six letters. Very important. It's taught in groups of six letters. Or six sounds. Sounds is the wrong word. Letters is the wrong word. Thank you. It's taught in groups of six sounds. It's very important people might ask you about this. It's not taught in order. We do not teach the first six sounds as apa, kuta, etfa. And there's a reason why we'll talk about that in a minute. There are seven groups. Seven groups of six sounds. You'll notice a couple of things as we get through this, that there's two double O ones. So no. Exactly. Think of the difference between the double O in the word food and the double O in blood. Okay, no. It's not blue, is it? No. And it's not moon. It's moon and blood. And cool food is ooh, ooh, there's ooh, ooh, ooh. And the th, there's two th sounds, the hard and the soft. Thank you, think. We're going to do this as a video. We're going to go do a video about this this week. Bath, path. And then there's this, that, with. <laughs> The other one, no voice. If you want to get deeper into phonics with me, we can go deeper. Today's just a very basic overview. Um, how many letters in each group? Six. Uh, how many sounds? How many sounds in each group? Six. Six. How many groups? Seven. Just checking. <laughs> Why don't we use these as the first six sounds? Have a think. Because words aren't taught. From the beginning of the alphabet, most words are an amalgamation of different. You don't find a word that's pronounced alphabet <laughs> editor. Because you can't teach as many words for your end result. You you can't teach as many. How many three-letter words can you make out of that? Oh, I see. That's fine. One, two, maybe maybe less than ten. There you go. Eight. Four-letter words. Double letters. There's more if you want to do four, five letters words, of course, adding the magic key to stuff, but, but the point being that you're trying to teach C, B, C, you're trying to teach vowel consonant, which is why with the Montessori or the, the, the analytical, you need to know the whole alphabet before they, because they took a little bit long, L's quite far in the alphabet, right? Uh, but with S-A-T-I-P-A, or sat ip which we'll call it from now on, there's like 30. I mean, these are all, this is a good one, there's loads of them. We've got this book right here. With all the words, all the words. And all of these words we have on flashcards. Because my team have done an amazing job making this for us. All right? I'm sure someone online said, where did you buy that? Where did you buy that? We made it. Okay. Where did you get that flashcard from? We made it. Just get it to a computer. This font, by the way, for you guys, this font with the lovely color. Early, the, 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 the Dolly Phonics kind of font, which I love, is called Sassoon Primary. S A W S W O N. Sassoon Primary. It should already be on the school computers. It's the one that has this wonderful cursive, a precursive A in it. Sassoon Primary. All of my PowerPoint and instructional video, instructional uh, resources are made with this font to have consistency. It's a free download. Uh, by the time, so that means, what this means by the way, you can teach a child six sounds and then within a week or a couple of lessons, I teach them six sounds. I mean if you did that with a slightly older kid, you might do two to three in a lesson. With young learners you do one a day. But even with a very young learner, they could learn that in six days if you met them every day. And by the end of that six days, they could have a crack at reading 30 or 40 words, including four or five letter words. Like stint. Right? I've got a video online of me, a girl, I won't say her name now, but she's on the video, and it's like a girl learns to read in three lessons. I literally just breezed through this group with her real quick, and then suddenly she was reading. So this is learning to... to decode the image that's S-I-T or it and not really 
hinging on the definition of the words it, but to be able to yes. pick it out of another word, the like process. situation. Or the process is the important part here. Okay. This, now you can't teach only phonics. The child needs to have a stream of other language. They need to learn their English. Otherwise, they might be able to read. I went to the park with mummy, no and then they go like, "Who is I? What is mummy? What's a yeah. park? What is this?" And you're like, "That's not what we're doing now." Yeah. Today we're talking about the science behind phonics. This is why they end up thinking, or this is why they end up uh, learning how to read on their own. Yes. And, and developing thinking for themselves. Exactly. They... Education is not learning the fact; it's training the mind to think. There are two ways to teach and two ways to learn. But it's the same thing, really. Inductive and deductive. Inductive and deductive. Inductive is me giving you information to memorize. C A T says cat. That means male in this language. Remember that. An induct, like induction, like a heater that puts the heat into it, right? To induct. The other one is deductive in Sherlock Holmes, where you figure out the rules on your own. We're not really on your own, but with guidance, but with you learn to do something by your own mental processes. There's a game we played, we don't have time for any of this today, but there's a game we played in the seminar where the guy was like, okay, we're gonna have a party. It's one of these word games you can play with older kids. We're gonna have a party, and everyone can bring something. I'm going to bring a balloon. What are you going to bring? You're going to say, dog. No, you can't bring that. What do you want to bring? A snail. No, you can't bring that either. What are you going to bring? Ice cream. No, you can't bring ice cream. You could bring some booze. Oh, I'll bring a ball. You can bring a ball. You can definitely bring a ball. What I'll bring a baby. Party. A baby. You can't bring a baby. Party. A snake. You can't have a snake either. I'm going to bring lollies. Okay, I'm going to bring a pool. Yeah, you can bring a pool, so he's already deducted it, yeah. Maybe you knew it already. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring some lollies and oh, balloons. I got one. A, a barrel of beer. A barrel of beer. It's a W. As long as there's a double letter in the middle of it somewhere, you can bring it. Ah. We're not going to play it, don't attack it. But in, in the seminar, he made us do this until everybody deducted the rule. Mm. And we kept going around the circle, and eventually, he goes, I never told you those rules. You figured them out, didn't you? You deducted it. Group two. Group three. So just by the time you've got the first six to 18 sounds down, you're already reading way over 100 words. And that can be done very, very quickly. Now, this is the procedure. This is the technical procedure part. This is the bit you really need to be able to perform yourself if you ever do this. So far, I've told you what it is, how it works, why we don't do the other in the background, right? How important it is. Now, let me show you how you do it. Hopefully, this should be done. We we'll give you an extra 10 minutes spare if that's right. Are you ready to go? Not yet. That's right, no, this is important, no. Right. You tell them a story. In that story, there are recommended stories in the handbook which you can use and read, but in that story you need to add the sound a lot. I will show you it. You add the sound to your story. After the story, you show them or you identify the sound we're talking about. After that, you include an action. So they've got a story in their head. Even if they don't fully understand the story, you're showing them a picture, telling them a story. A very basic story. Even if they don't understand it, it doesn't matter. They're hearing the sound. If you're a Thai person or a non-English speaker and you're trying to teach your child at home, use the story in your own language. But make sure it's got that sound in it. You then give them an action to attach to that sound. So in their brain now, they've got an image, a story. They've got a physical, kinetic relationship to that. And a sound, an audio sound that's going. Audio. Visual kinesthetic. You're connecting all the dots in their brain. You then, because kids are awesome, sing them a song with that sound in it. Easy song. You then teach them how to form the letter properly. Which we'll talk about in a minute, mirror writing. It's really difficult. And you then, after all of that process, 
check if they can hear that sound or not in words? Can they identify that sound? And I'm going to do it now for you. The skills that are taught in every lesson, letter sound, letter formation, how to blend the sound, how to identify the sound, and if you're in, later in the program, a tricky word. That's the process. These are the skills. If I was assessing your phonic performance as a teacher, I would have these in a box. Has the teacher reviewed the letter sound? Has the teacher taught how the sound of the letter is formed? You need to go? Do you need to go? Can you wait five more minutes? Let's wait five minutes. I don't need to go. I think it's just sit down. The big one comes with anything. Five more minutes. You immediately blend the sound. Once you've got more than one letter in your bank of sounds, you're immediately blending. You don't wait. Okay. Don't forget this will be on video for the university later. Okay? Tricky words we'll talk about another day. Okay. Letter formation is important. Correct formation helps with handwriting. Chant around, up and down. Use air writing. This is going to be difficult. Let me try. We don't have the time to do the whole workshop thing here. What I mean for you is this. Watch what I'm doing. I am going to write the letter A. Does this look right to you? Right. What's wrong with it? No. It's fine for me. No tracking, very fast, and probably the wrong way around. Yeah, look, is it, does this make the letter A to you? No. no. It's flipped, isn't it? Yeah. Because I'm an idiot teacher, and I'm not thinking about it. You're looking at me. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what it means is, there you go, <laughs> you now have to learn how to write the entire alphabet Mirrored. Oh, mirrored. Backwards is the mirrored. Now, just very quickly. Um, number one, also, let me do it properly for you. Now notice what I'm doing. What hand am I using? What hand do I write with? Right. Why have I done that? They're seeing a mirror of you. They're seeing a mirror of right. So not only are you going to have to learn how to write letters in reverse, you have to learn to do it with your left hand. And then, once you're just amazing, you have to be able to do it the other way around with both hands at the same time. So you have to be able to go one way with one hand and one way with the other. See, that is a brain fart. That just sometimes you freeze up and it's like, oh. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. And the other reason we did left handed is this. Can you move forward a little bit for me, please? So you can maybe be on the camera. This is in the camera, just very briefly. Is she in camera? Now, Ern, you're a student that's struggling. I've been watching you write, and I've noticed that you're not forming them correctly. You're struggling with it. So what I'm going to say to you is this. Please give me the hand you write with, OK? And we're going to do it together. And we're going to go around, up, and down. Try that again, I'm going to do less touching now, so there. Around, up, and down. One more time. Around, up, and down. You can now take your pen and write that for me. Around, up, and down. Wonderful, thank you. So it allows me, it allows you to mirror what the child's doing and help them get it right. Some, some of the little kids are going to do this. They're not getting it. They're babies. You need to calm and get down with our eye level, grab the hand, and do it. And you chant it around, up, and down, around, up, and down. And you need to come up with a chant for every letter. Down, down, down in the ground, up, around, for me. Up, up high in the sky, down, up, around, for me. Right? Look at the TV screen as well, yeah? Is it good? Excellent, thanks. All right? So then that's what. I've got a lot of time for all of this, but the chanting works, even with the little ones. They might not get all the way, they'll get it. They might not be able to do the full chant. All right? Let me do a story for you, and then we'll have to end it short. Let me do a story for you, and I'll do one letter for you. What you then should do if we have more time is I would put you to a group, and I would ask you to teach him three letters and him to teach you three letters. We don't have time for that today. 
So, here we go. Okay, so last Saturday, my friends and I, Susie and Sarah, Steve and Sam, oh, and Sally was there too. It was so much fun. We went for a picnic and we had sandwiches and sausages and someone brought some skates and it was great. But then Sally said, Jay, Jay, help, save me, save me. There's something in the grass. What do you think was in the grass? We looked at the grass. And there was a snake in the grass. The snake was in the grass. And we all thought that was great fun. So we all decided to do a snake sound. Can everybody in the room please go And can you show me your snake? And we all decided to sing this song. The snake is in the grass. The snake is in the grass. Let me hear it. Yeah. And the way we do this, if you want to get your riding hand up for me, show me your riding hands. We're going to go over, under, under. Can we do that again? Over, under, under. A little bit faster. Over, under, under. Do it nice and big, big letters. Not like this. Big, big over, child. Excellent, guys. You might get this. That's okay for lesson one and two, don't worry. You're getting there, right? Don't, don't expect to have perfect songs and everything, all right? Which of these words has no ts in it? Let's count them out. Mm, ale. Can you hear a ts in there? You can, yeah. Ts, mm, ale, ts. That's right. What about ts? I'd er. Is there a s in there? What about th l ow er? No. No. What about s un? Yes. And you might call a middle s. Passport. It doesn't have to be the first sound, right? Mm. Or class. At the end sound. Wonderful. And the next one is a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a Point. Good. And you start to blend. You're blending now. After just two lessons. All right. I won't do too many. Point. Say. You're using your eyes, ears, your mouth, and your hand all at the same time. And then once you've done the first six groups, you're already up to the CBT words. If you were doing Montessori, you'd have had to taught the whole alphabet, all the names, 26 images, 26 letters, 26 pictures, and then maybe you'd get around to the at or the app group after about a semester. Afterwards. Yeah, this would be like one week. This would be like a week's worth. Point in saying or in that two string, and then, then after that you move into the idea that two letters make one sound. I think we can do a. Uh, how much of when? K one. I only work on the first three groups, the first eighteen sounds, and we don't do much writing of any kind. Maybe just the odd letter transition, the odd letter trans uh, trans uh, transcribing. K two. All the groups, and you're reading at the word level. You're asking them to read entire words. At this level, K1, we're just getting the sounds involved, getting to blend very basic one and two letter images together, one or two letter sound, one, one or two sound words together, at it, on, ag, on. The words don't need to have any meaning. You can teach nonsense words. Flag, mogga, boo, boo, you know, smag, dappery. And that's the word you may be transliterating with smag, dappery in, in my seminar again. And by K3, all the groups, full sentences, full reading, full writing if they did the full course with us. So if a child went through two or a couple of years with us, by the end of it, they're reading full sentences. I've got a group, Chavin, they've done this with me, brother and sister, they are now doing grammar, and they can read full sentences, multiple sentences, and understand it. Okay, there is an app. I don't know if it's free anymore. There is an app if you want to do it. It used to be free. Then what? Jolly grammar. That's from another seminar. 
that did take just over an hour, right? That was like an hour and a bit, as, as expected. Is that good? Perfect. Thank you. you know we were late to begin. Does that clarify more than before, I hope? Yes. Is that you understand phonics a bit better now? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've, watched, I've been watching your other videos, and I've watched your other seminars on phonics as well. So, right. so yeah. Well, if you remember the learning retention pyramid, which is downstairs, if you've forgotten, there's actually it's the other way around. That's the uh, that's the creation part. That's the way around. Sorry, upside down. Sorry. Boom. Boom. That sounds more like a funnel. Yeah. Um, listening to a lecture, which is what I just did to you, you're likely to remember ten percent. And then you might be asked to create the, the, the. But if you want to remember 90% of what you've just learned, teach it. Go ahead and tell somebody else what you've learned. Teach them that. So go home and so try your best to re explain that to your son. Try your best to re explain it to a Thai person. Try and explain it to, to your partner. Try and explain it to sit there instead. It's difficult. Try and make a video. Imagine, this is really hard. It's really embarrassing to make videos and stuff. I don't care anymore. But like my advice would be, get your camera set up and do what I'm doing right now. Try and give a 30 minute mini lecture on what phonics is in your mind. I guarantee you will help your mind remember. Are we good? Yeah. Perfect. Thank Sorry you. that was so rushed. We've all got things to do. I've got to be, I've got to be in class in 25 minutes myself. So later, is there a part two? Yeah, there certainly can be. We can do more about this. We can do like groups more in depth to it. But if you have to, uh, if you ever have to teach this product, and anyone watching at home too, if you ever have to teach this product, um, I will guide you. So we'll just do group one, give you a time limit. Oh, let's get this done within the first three or four weeks. Once you once you're done with that, I will guide you. Don't feel that you now have to be an expert in all, all of this. You don't. I, I'm your mentor in that sense. I will happily guide you. But now, if I say, if you, if you say to me, oh, I've been asked to teach Charlie Phonics somewhere, um, just say, great, 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 where are they at? I'll tell you the group. You'll, you'll, you'll have a basic idea of what's expected of you, and then uh, when it comes to writing the plan now, I can sit and help you with that. Are we good? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, thanks. If anyone is watching at home, thank you so much. I will say goodbye, and if you could help me out, just press stop for me. That was the first one ever? Live. Live, huh? Live. Live. We should put that link on our Facebook page. Do you guys, do you guys have uh, 